Welcome, everyone. Yeah, we'll pick up stragglers going around, going around, on. There's no real problem. Okay, um, my name is Emanuele Bassi. I work for Intel. Uh, in well, I work in the modeling team. Now I work in the uh, visualization team, along with fine people like Keith Bucket, Carl Worth, Christian Oxberg, and other very, very good developers. So you might ask yourself, why are you? I don't know. Uh, this talk is called uh, Year Clutter. Uh, technically, it should be a year and a half, but I just rounded up. So, Clutter, how many of you have heard about Clutter? Good. How many of you have heard, have used Clutter? Well, how many of you have no idea what Clutter is? Awesome. My audience. So, Clutter is free software. You know, it's a library to create fast, visually rich, portable user interfaces. Very fast, shotgun style. So, this talk is about um, a year and a half of Clutter development. And it was written uh, after I gave five talks about Clutter in around a year and a half. Two of them were tutorials, two hours long each. One was a training session of four days, six hours per day, and one was a lightning talk. And one thing I learned from this year and a half experience is that I hate tutorials. I bloody hate them. Because I have to talk a lot, and I don't like talking a lot. And most of all, people listen to me don't like when I talk a lot. I've learned that much. I'm not that stupid. Uh, but I really like lightning talks. And so I tried to capture a little bit of lightning talk spirit in this uh, kind of talk. So I'm going to try this. I'm going to play it by ear. I already tried something like this at uh, the Grand Canaria Desktop Summit uh, last uh, July. But it's uh, this is a improved version. So let me just give some ground rules. Uh, most of the slides will have one word, or maybe two, or maybe a lot. Uh, if it comes to that, I will try to use picture, which is a thousand words, obviously. Uh, in this case, is probably, uh, yeah, three to twenty hundred thousand words, but it's fine, don't worry. I will try to explicitly, blatantly elicit your laugh. And when I say blatantly, I mean this. So please laugh now. <laughs> Great. Great audience. A very cooperative audience. Uh, I will throw a picture of kittens at random times. The, no worries. And most of all, I will try to do four lightning talks inside one talk, like five, six minutes each. So. Everyone understood the rules? Okay, cool. So let's start with the first lightning talk, which is Clutter 1.0, an overview. Um, where were we in 2008? I don't know you, but I was in uh, Istanbul, nice city. Uh, I was having fun along with others like John Pamieri and Matthew Garrett. Uh, now that I think of it is all the fun we had involved alcohol, so it was kind of interesting. But another thing that happened in 2008 at Gran Canaria was that we released Clutter 0.8, which was the last um, development release uh, of Clutter for the 0.x um, uh, development cycle. Then something happened. Dun, dun, dun. OpenEnd got acquired by Intel. OpenEnd was the original uh, author of, of Clutter, among other things. And 
we kind of sp sparked the interest in Intel for their Moblin uh, project. And they started thinking about using Clutter. And it was simple for them to just acquire a small startup. So kind of that, that was, the, was the idea. So we started developing um, Moblin. And uh, in parallel, we started working on Clutter 1.0. And we decided to do a release of 1.0 around January. Uh, then something came along in the usual delays of, of a, of a develop, development cycle. So the January release was bumped to February, then March, April, May, June, July. Finally, we could release Cluster 1.0. It's just a little delay, just a year, no problem. Um, 1.0 was released after Grand Canaria, and it was in time for uh, Moblin 2.0 to be released officially, um, so we could demonstrate the capabilities of Clutter um, on a real um, platform, like the Moblin Network platform. So what changed between 0 0.8 and 1.0? What took up? Why? It took us so long from, go to, from going from 0 0.8 to 1.0. Most of all, we worked on performance, um, consolidating the API, and working on new animation framework. And we're going to release 1.2 uh, in March. So uh, the 1.x development cycle is technically just started, and we already <laughs> focusing on the next uh, 1.x release, which is 1.2. But what 1.x means? It means API and ABI stability. So one application written for the 1.0 API will, be, uh, um, will work just, just as well with a uh, uh, 1.2 release, 1.4, 1.6, 1.29, 1 well, 28, and so on and so forth. It also means the minimal amount of reliable API we are committing to. Uh, we released 1.x with around 1,600 uh, public symbols, documented public symbols. So something that you could use. It's the public API, which is still 250 maybe 300 symbols more than the 0 0.8 release, but it's far less than we uh, initially wanted. Because one of the tricks you have to do when you release a 1.x or an API, you um, decide to um, expose a, an API, an ABI stable API, is that you have to commit to the minimal amount of reliable API you want to expose to avoid uh, having to break your promise and say, oh, no, wait, uh, 1.0 was not API and ABI stable. 1.2 will be. Uh, no, wait, 1.4 will be. 1.6, uh, well, in order to avoid that, you probably want to commit to the minimal kernel of, of reliable API you want to. One of the things that also uh, allows you to, to um, focus and commit to a, a small API is that you can fully document it. And by full documentation, I don't mean just creating an HTML page with all the symbols. It means writing what the function does, the side effects, and also examples and tutorials and other kind of documentation. Uh, let me give you some metrics about the 1.x as it is now. Uh, we're around 76,000 uh, lines of code, um, real line of, lines of code. We're, uh, burn through the 100,000 global lines in, I think, uh, November last year. Uh, but we also have uh, 40,000 plus lines of code of test suite. We have 1,700 symbols in, in Clutter, which are 99% documented, 99.9% .9 documented, um, and 300 symbols in Coggles, um, which is slightly less documented. Coggle is our low-level um, OpenGL abstraction library. Uh, since the uh, 1.0 uh, development cycle began, uh, we had uh, 
1,800 uh, single commits. And coming from 35, more than 35 um, uh, committers, and just less than half are uh, Intel employees. So we are getting much more contributions from the community than um, from inside Intel. Yes, six minutes. Wow. Okay, second line thing talk about the implicit animations API that landed in Clutter 1.0 and it's being expanded inside Clutter 1.2 uh, and further on. Uh, Clutter began with an animation API in uh, Clutter 0.2 around. And it wasn't um, not a very be very good implicit API, implicit animations API. Actually, it depended on you setting up the initial and final state, and both could be completely independent from one another. So it was called behaviors with a U in the API. It's so much fun to have half of the API in N US and the other half in N. Uh, UK. It's fantastic. Um, at least, well, for us it's fantastic. For people actually using it, well, we're getting a lot of flack. That's why for 2.0 we'll switch into Fran to French. <laughs> That's going to hurt. Um, but a real implicit animations API is meant to be uh, used as you define the final state the initial state is implicit from the um, element on the sync graph and the current state of the element on the sync graph. And then the animation library will uh, provide the in-between states for you. So for this reason, in 1.0, we provided, we wrote the animation object, the uh, implicit animation API, which is a very, very simple uh, API that binds an interval of values, a uh, strongly typed interval of values. So you have to uh, define the type, also the type of the, of the values, to G object properties. And then uses a timeline object, which is just a clock, and an alpha object, which is uh, just a, an object that binds a function to the clock. So you can define easing modes like uh, uh, in, out, bounds, or uh, quadratic progress values. What you have to do is create an animation, possibly get the state of the um, actor, which is the element on the scene graph, take its properties, bind them to the uh, interval, and then manage the animation lifetime in terms of memory management, because obviously this is C and um, everything is uh, up to you. This process can be completely abstracted by this function. So whilst before you had objects flying around and memory management for each and every object of the, of the animation sequence, you now have one function, clutter act animate. It's a variadic argument function, so it's C only and it's uh, all out magic and manages the memory for most of the objects by itself, so you don't have to care. Obviously, it's the complexity it hides is uh, essentially what I. Re it's the, the the great strength of this function and is also its biggest weakness. You don't really know what's going on. But you can decompose the function and use uh, the uh, basic uh, implementation. It's all available to you. You can re-implement it in, even in other languages. That was even shorter. Good. Um, this is another feature of the 1.x uh, development cycle. And it was one of the major reasons why uh, we decided to um, take a little bit uh, more time to actually write Clutter 1.0 and release Clutter 1.0. Um, this is the, the, the master clock. 
It's not this. It's not this, but it's this, the master clock, is a construct that it lies at the heart of uh, the Clutter main loop, which is the actual uh, thing that makes Clutter run and uh, handles everything from event handling to uh, animation and uh, to repaint cycles. And it's driven by a simple concept that is the syncing to V blank. The V blank ratio, uh, the uh, vertical blanking of your, uh, of your screen. Because it's fairly stupid to blurt out more than your graphics card and panel can actually handle. Uh, leads to tearing, leads to artifacts. It, you really don't want to be blurting 300, 400 frames a second. It's good and fine and dandy for GLX gears, but as everyone should know, GLX gear is not a benchmark. Dot com. No, well, GLX gear is GLX gear at benchmark dot com. We'll answer for you as well. So, what is the master clock in, uh, in its implementation? It's a simple state machine that says that watches if anything has changed inside the scene graph. And if it does, then it will advance the animations, will process the events coming from the windowing system, like menu, uh, no, sorry, menu, mouse pointers, keyboard, keyboard events, and so on and so forth, will relay out the scene graph, will paint it, and will wait for the V-blank. And all this is handled implicitly. You will, uh, all your code will be that something changes. All you have to do is change something. And all of this will be done by Clutter automatically. And then the control will be given back to you at the something changes. Another picture of a cat. All of this is handled by the glib main loop, which is the same main loop that, that uh, drives GTK or drives GStreamer. So this means that even if you're embedding a GStreamer control or if you're, if you're embedding a um, Clutter scene graph inside a GTK uh, or a Q, well, yeah, GTK um, uh, toolkit uh, widget, then this will be maintained. This all set of variants will be maintained. But how Clutter works is done, is, um, is the result of what we're doing underneath. Clutter is using OpenGL for uh, getting hardware acceleration. But as we all know, OpenGL is not a good API. It's actually, well, it sucks. It's a massive flat uh, namespace and everything that could have possibly been misdesigned was misdesigned. Uh, it was meant to be used by CAD programs, CAD applications, and it shows really badly. So what, you, what Clutter provides and what Clutter is based on is a GPU programming library. The modern GPUs have uh, a pipeline that is fully programmable. So what you need is a library that actually allows you to do that to program the GPU. You also want something that is integrated with Clutter so that you can use the uh, Coggle API to implement your own Clutter actors and uh, to do custom uh, painting and uh, custom handling. So the uh, OpenGL abstraction library, Coggle, is based on the concept of draw buffers, which can be on screen and off screen. Uh, on screen are the usual uh, X windows or um, any other uh, windowing system elements coming from your platform. But it can also be off screen, like, uh, and in this case, GL provides you a um, cross platform construct, which is the frame buffer object. What Coggle does on these draw buffers is painting um, materials. A material is just a collection of a geometry and 
um, something to paint inside that geometry, like a color or a gradient or a texture or multiple textures. And then upload the geometry and what has to be painted to the GPU. But also provides, Coggle provides also the vertex buffer object, which are a description of a vertex inside the, the GPU so that you can define multiple vertices, a color between them, a color associated for each vertex, and then draw a, um, a gradient or a complex geometry. But all of this is not blurted directly inside the GPU because that would end up uh, being very costly because it has the, the usual GL implementation will have to save the state, uh, you upload the geometry, you upload what you want to paint, and then uh, you have to save the state again and then for the next vertex and do the same for each vertex. So what Coggle does is store everything that you've done uh, in terms of geometry and, and colors and textures inside a journal that will be replayed um, with a single, hopefully a single um, GL call, which minimizes the amount of state changes inside the driver. And this will hopefully be a lot faster on your, on your GPU. So what Coggle does is try to state the cache the state of the GPU and do every operation as a set of a uh, batch operation. So uh, in the future, in the closed future, we're going to uh, even program the GPU directly by using um, shaders uh, so that we control, Coggle controls the state. Most of the time what MISA does on, on, on modern GPUs is actually compute the state, create a shader, a shader um, program, and then put it on the GPU pipeline. Since we know the state because we are drawing the, the scene graph ourselves, we don't have to let Misa compute the state and save everything and then create the, the program and then upload it. We can simply create the program ourselves, upload it, done. Obviously this should be coupled with the ability to uh, break out into GL so that you can write GL code, uh, you can use GL API directly. Uh, this is not really a good idea most of the time because obviously you will have to save the state, draw your, uh, call your GL API and then restore the state. And that usually means uh, either synchronizing to GPU or uh, creating uh, uh, a problematic um, uh, state cache um, miss that you will basically destroy the, the, all the performance optimization that have been done inside Coggle. So don't do that. Yeah. Good, good, good. So We've been talking about the past, 1.8, 1.0. We've been talking about the present, what 1.0, 1.2 do. Uh, let's talk about a little bit about the future. This is the future. I would want, would want one, really. So we are going to follow six month cycles. The 1.2 release is going to follow a is already on track for a six months um, development cycle. Uh, we are trying to synchronize with Moblin and Gnome for their releases, uh, obviously because Moblin is entirely based on Clutter and the uh, Gnome 3 um, effort, which is um, represented also by the Gnome shell, uh, the new Gnome shell um, user interface, is also based on Clutter. So, uh, we really want those two projects to make um, full use of the new features in, in every release clutter. So we're going to follow those. But we're still committed, very much committed to an API and ABI stable uh, development cycle so that applications won't break. 
1.2 is going to be, is mostly here. The um, API freeze is going to be uh, at the end of February when I actually get back to the office. Um, sorry, the beginning of February. And the actual release is going to be uh, first week of March or last week of February, depending on how much bugs we have to fix. What 1.2 provides is the new Layout Manager's API. Uh, right now, if you want to write a, a complex actor um, uh, that is composed by multiple children and has a complex layout, then you either have to subclass a clutter group, which is the basic um, container group, container actor, or you have to write your own uh, um, layout in code, and then you have to subclass clutter actor, then you have to implement stuff like paint and stuff like mapped and unmapped. It's fairly complicated. It's uh, like subclassing a GTK widget, which is a lot of work. Um, it's simpler in Clutter because we are not very, um, we are not so old, but <laughs> it's actually a fair chunk of code. So we designed the layer managers, which just um, let you focus on writing the way the children should be laid out inside a container. So you want to have a box, you want to have a reflowing grid, you want to have like a table or something like that, you just have to worry about that. And then the rest will be taken care of Clutter itself. Uh, we also focused on uh, improving the portability so that you can use Clutter on OS X, you can use the Clutter on Windows. Uh, actually, the Windows port is a fair chunk better than the Quartz port, but that's just because we don't have many Quartz developers. Um, we also, even though we don't uh, write uh, GLES uh, support for Clutter and we, don't, we cannot test it, um, we uh, have a lot of feedback from GLES users and uh, on embedded platforms, and they can actually uh, use Clutter on on this kind of platforms, on this kind of embedded platforms like uh, the Nokia N N900 and the um, the Access Linux plat the Access uh, company has just released um, uh, uh, a mobile phone using Clutter. Um, well, they're working on a um, mobile phone using Clutter and GLES 2.0. So the portability, portability is there. Obviously, on pl some platforms, we cannot test it, so we rely on community uh, feedback. Another thing that we want to improve, and we are working a lot with uh, the graphics team, the Intel graphics team as well, is improving the performance of Clutter so that we can use uh, new features of the, of the modern GPUs and use them uh, well enough so that the OpenGL usage and the uh, feedback from uh, the user interfaces is actually a lot better than anything else. But another thing that we are doing is trying to design uh, Clutter for 2.0. That is the next API, uh, the next major API break that we are planning in a couple of years, two or three, depends on uh, the needs of the GNOME project, the needs of the Moblin project, and, and how much we are co feel confident on breaking the API. This doesn't mean that all the new features will be planned for the next API break. If something does not require an API break, we can implement it in the 1.x. API cycle. So sorry, no ponies for 2.0. But we are trying to do our best, and we are trying very hard to be uh, successful in what we, what, we, what we want to do. But most of all, what we are trying to do is to let you have fun in using our, our API, in using our library. Uh, this is a special thanks uh, slide that I prepared for the 1.0 release. All these people contributed 
a lot of time in code to make Flutter 1.x what it is right now. And these are the, one of the reasons why I enjoy so much being Flutter's maintainers, because these are very special and important people. So I was quite fast. Yes. Good. So any questions at all? Like, I don't know. Good. Um, does your, um, does your uh, Windows port use OpenGL as well, or can you yeah. use D3D? No, we use OpenGL as well. We use, uh, Clutter does not require a lot of OpenGL um, API. In theory, we are almost ready for OpenGL 3.0, so the API footprint is very minimal. Um, so OpenGL on Windows actually suits, uh, fit, fit, mm, fits the job. And um, it's, uh, it's pretty easy to, to actually use it. And uh, you can use Visual Studio 2 .8, uh, 2008 uh, to actually build Clutter. Um, we have people working constantly, people in the community actually, working constantly to make sure that Clutter works with Visual Studio. Uh, you can also use MingW to build Clutter and, and use it on Windows. But yeah, to answer your question, we use OpenGL on Windows. Um, I, I haven't actually used Clutter. I know, know what it's about. And I, I've, I've used sort of older generation things from, mm. from the GNOME Canvas side of mm -hmm. um, One thing that worries me about them a little bit is from the user's perspective, every app potentially can be hugely different. And, and I see it as being a little bit like um, Flash in web pages. People know how to use web pages. They know how to scroll. But yep. if there's a Flash element in there, they, all, they either don't implement scrolling or they all do it differently or whatever. Is, yep. is there a danger of that, do you think? With um, Clutter does not implement any policy at all. We are trying very hard to be the minimal amount of API and the minimal amount of, of actual um, policy that we can get away with. Uh, it's all done by um, higher level toolkit. On the Moblin toolkit, well, on the Moblin platform, we have the, we had the NBTK toolkit, which was the net, uh, netbook toolkit, uh, which has been replaced um, for Moblin 2.2 by the Moblin User Experience toolkit or MX, and that toolkit uses Clutter, uh, implements Clutter actors, uh, implements a lot of uh, functionality uh, similar to GTK, but in essence, Clutter is a canvas and um, allows other toolkits to be built upon and provide the policy that they want. Uh, so in our near future, uh, at least my master plan is, uh, and I'm talking with my, also with my uh, GTK uh, team member um, hat on, uh, is actually being able to use Clutter natively inside GTK and use Clutter to implement GTK widgets as well. Um, so that all the policy, all the UI that GTK and the mobile toolkit provide are hardware accelerated and are animated and they are visually rich and fast and, uh, but still all the policy is the same as the desktop. Does that mean that we'll be able to use GTK theme engines to render to OpenGL efficiently? Um, well, in theory, you can already use Clutter GTK, which is the GTK integration library for Clutter, to uh, embed a Clutter scene graph inside a GTK application, and then, and this is rather new, embed a GTK widget inside that. And the GTK widget will respect all the GTK theming infrastructure. So, mm -hmm. And you can use the GTK styling API to actually color and paint, and well, not paint, but color and uh, determine the size of, of Clutter actors inside that. Um, a GTK engine, GTK style engine, is going to be quite problematic because, well, it's not going to be extremely problematic because they mostly use Cairo. And you can use Cairo to paint on a Clutter uh, actor. So you can 
use the entire set of GNOME libraries to actually have a cluster application that looks exactly like a GTK application. So, I mean, we work on the GTK theming code for Mozilla, yeah. um, one of the things, many things we do. So, um, I mean, there's a bit of a problem with, uh, how do you get the theme engine to render into, I mean, uh, theme engines use Cairo internally, yeah. but when you call into the theme engine, you have to provide an X drawable. Yeah. Is that uh, going to change? Well, that is hopefully going to change for GTK 3.0 anyway, because that API is a major suck. Yeah. It's an <laughs> impressive piece of fail that I've not, I rarely have seen. Uh, that is going to be changed anyway for, for GTK 3.0, but uh, one of the things that we use uh, in Clutter, Clutter GTK is um, the client-side Windows support that recently landed in GTK. Uh, you can take a snapshot of the, uh, of an entire, well, you can draw the entire, uh, the entire GTK um, widget, including its uh, children and all the other stuff, to an off-screen buffer, you take the off-screen buffer, you put it inside a GL texture, and you are you have a clutter actor. So that off-screen buffer is an XPix map. Yeah. So that's pretty slow, right? Um, yes and no. It's going to be faster as soon as Cairo gets a proper GL surface. And Car is look at me and sending. Huh? See, the the idea is to get um, the current. Cairo to the uh, API to be accelerated uh, on GL and in theory share as much as possible on on uh, X and on Linux to have a single buffer and zero copy and all the the magic and uh, performance uh, that uh, the new uh, architecture is getting us. But go to Carl's talk tomorrow, and it will explain all of this much better than I could, actually. Yeah. Where, where are things at with other language bindings for oh, this yeah. stuff? Oh, Language bindings. Um, Cairo, uh, Cairo, sorry. Clutter uh, is, um, well, for the GNOME shell, uh, which is written in uh, JavaScript, as some of you might know, uh, it's written in JavaScript and it's using the object introspection, the object introspection data. Um, obviously, they need our API, so Clutter was one of the first um, libraries to actually get introspection generation at, run, uh, at compile time. We expose the XML, you can pass it directly, and we also compile the type lib so that you can call into Clutter API directly. Uh, that's the future, and hopefully every single language in existence will use that. Um, for the slow on the uptake languages like Perl, Python, and others, um, we have real language bindings. I maintain the Clutter Perl bindings. Uh, I also wrote the uh, Python Clutter bindings, uh, but I, luckily enough, don't maintain them anymore because I hate Python. But, um, yeah, we support a lot of language bindings. We support Vala, we support uh, C Sharp, uh, thanks to the um, awesome work that the Nobel people have been doing. Um, and we support C++, well, so the C++ binding is um, uh, com uh, community uh, binding, but is hosted on the GNOME uh, Git repository. So you can also write in C. Uh, C++, uh, we have some old-ish Ruby bindings, so and we accept patches for them. Uh, one of my colleagues is the maintainer, but absolutely. Uh, the real way forward is the um, uh, introspection data. So as soon as um, language by the uh, languages uh, get introspection support, then you can use immediately the new Clutter API as soon as we release a new tarball. Does the Perl API use that introspection? Uh, there's a module that provides that, but it's experimental, and, well, I have to have a look at that. Uh, but the Perl bindings are usually quite up to date. Any questions? Good. 
then. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much.